Hello, the practitioner here. Bachelor of Science student, chemistry major, mathematics minor, magician, parapsych researcher, technical agnostic, and Fortean skeptic. Um, by the way, just so you know, the reason I'm uh, the reason I wear a bear shirt in this particular video is because I'm doing my support of evolution again today. Um, anyway, uh, I want to just clarify that I am a again, as I said, I'm an agnostic. Um, I don't really care one way or the other, and um, one of my entire goals to actually troubleshoot logical arguments on both sides, uh, you know, illogical arguments on both sides, in the hopes of trying to make, um, you know, the playing field considerably more, um, you know, open discussing the actual ideas and a little bit less on the illogic. And I'm actually going to agree with you on uh, three points, one of which is the uh, atheist, uh, where he said uh, that, you know, that suggesting that uh, atheism will uh, come, that peace will reign. Um, you know, some atheists do believe this, some luckily, however, have a tad more sense. Um, and those are the few who I haven't had to correct um, about the uh, because of the fact they realize that human nature does have a larger part to play in some of this. It's actually their uh, reason for why God doesn't exist. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, the second uh, thing I will agree with you on is the uh, fact that um, uh, is the fact that uh, the bulk of religious war can be traced to maybe if not to someone's greed, then at least at the, at the very least to uh, misinterpretation. Um, here's the other thing. Uh, one of the other things which often comes into a problem is the fact that uh, in an area where there is low literacy or uh, or, lo or lack of logic, see my video uh, my video series in the absence of logic, um, people um, can end up becoming uh, fundamentally zealous of their ideas. Even in a in a fairly literate society, there is a certain amount of fundamentalist zealousness that comes after you've you know had your belief sort of almost vindicated for a certain period of time, or lack thereof, or your lack of belief, uh, either one, um, and. That particular belief format can manifest itself in well, partly what Stalin did because he twisted, um, he twisted it for his own ends. Uh, but the thing is, what's interesting is that despite Stalin being a madman, he set a precedent which every other communist dictator in the USSR followed until its fall in 1991. Mao did the exact same thing, and he was independent of Stalin. So, you know, I think that what happened here was there was a, a twist of, you know, I think they misinterpreted what communist, what Marx, what Karl Marx actually said. Uh, and twisted it for their own ends and set a dangerous precedent, which actually China is still using right now, despite using Western economic styles. Uh, just look at their oppression of Falun Gong for an example. Um, so yeah, uh, also the atheist uh, calling you stupid uh, just because you support a belief in God. Um, that was highly uncalled for on his part. It was an ad hominem attack. And, um, you know, I agree with you that, uh, again, he, he was highly out of line by doing that. Now, as for the rest of his argument about who created God, that's where I have to disagree with you on. And uh, this is one of those ones where, um, you know, people say, who created God? Well, the thing is, um, you're right, God need not have been created. Um, and I've already posited before, uh, again, just in pure speculation, how, how computer uh, how computer analogies could be, um, how uh, computer analogies could be used. Another example of something that's uh, currently been um, a, a principle that has been invoked in physics on occasion, and uh, as a matter of fact, every uh, most physicists, particularly with string theory and the like, are adamantly trying to avoid, is something called the anthropic principle. This suggests that um, we created God because God created us, sort of like in a in a uh, in a vicious circle. Like uh, uh, the universe wouldn't be here unless we were here to observe it, and you know we kind of feed back through time. And then there's this whole thing about the transactional interpretation of quantum mechanics and some you know new time travel type like postulations of string theory and the like, which they're dealing with in fringe edge of, uh, fringe edge of physics. So. You know, it is possible about that. But the thing is that um, just to say that just because the Bible says that God is I am, I want to clarify that that is not necessarily proof that God exists, okay? Um, you know, in this argument, um, yes, the atheists have gone, you know, have, have gone out of line. But um, just to say that uh, the Bible says that uh, God exists is not proof that God exists. Um, I just want to let you know that. So just, you know, I mean, I, I agree. I respect your beliefs. I'm not trying to push you to... Um, you know, I'm not trying to debunk your beliefs. What I'm saying is that, um, as proof for yourself, that may be the case. But when trying to prove that God exists to other people, um, you may already be aware of this. So I'm just, you know, if I am and I'm preaching to the converted here, I'm, no pun intended on this one. If I'm already preaching to the choir, um, you know, and you already are aware of this, then I apologize for having brought it up. But just in case, you know, then hopefully it'll be a useful reminder. But just in case you don't know, um, you know, uh, this in that, you know, just to say that something is just because the Bible says. Uh, is kind of more an appeal to authority because the Bible is written about God, and to say that you know God, God inspired or God wrote this book, and then to say that it proves God exists, um, there needs to be an external source of proof 
uh, there needs to be an external source of proof besides the Bible to prove that God exists, like a, a secondary point, if you will. Otherwise, it becomes a, t a tautology, which is like a begging the question. It basically the premise becomes the premise uh, becomes the conclusion, and you know feeds in on itself. So anyway, uh, that having been said, um, you know uh, again, um, like I said, I'm an agnostic. I don't know which what one way or the other. Um, I consider God to be an untestable claim at this point because of the fact that we don't have a means of uh, trying to find an external source of proof. Um, and no, the, the glory and majesty of the physical universe does not count because of the fact that the atheists have been able to equally use that. Uh, and actually, it's not a proof of atheism either. Like, don't, you know, uh, if, if the same piece of proof can be used, um, if the same piece of proof can be used uh, by both sides of an argument, uh, then, it's not, then it doesn't constitute proof uh, for one side over the other. Uh, with one exception, and this is the one exception, if the evidence for both sides, um, if the evidence for both sides um, requires mathematical interpretation, there is by definition a right mathematical interpretation and a wrong mathematical interpretation. There, you know, uh, get, you know, given what the physical laws are that might happen to go into that, that's one thing. Say, for example, in the global warming debate, Bjorn Lombard uh, did a very different mathematical interpretation from the IPCC and the actual peer review literature on this and uh, he was debunked uh, by by nature you know and by the other peer-reviewed journals for having used uh, incorrect math applying to the same uh, you know environmental data so um, you know that that's that's very very different kettle of fish but in this case I mean like if there was actually a mathematical um, proof or if there was a, a way of taking uh, the the world's data and then using a mathematical proof from that to show uh, that God exists and then simultaneously giving a couple of other predictions we could test and then we could proceed in testing them and then prove uh, God's existence by that. I would be very, very much. Uh, I would very, very much like to look at uh, one such uh, uh, mathematical proof. Matter of fact, I would be. Uh, I would be more overjoyed to see such a mathematical proof because it would be. You know, because even uh, whether, regardless of whether or not we had uh, tested those predictions yet, it would give us a a starting block in trying to better understand whether or not a there is a God and b if there is a God. What is that God, and how does it manifest in the world? You know, like we could get a better understanding of what God actually is. Um, but anyway, that's my side note. Um, in that particular case, um, just to say that you know that uh, God is, I am, or what have you. Um, your line of argument uh, from biblical is great, but to pr to say that uh, that God exists or what have you uh, as a debunking the who created God argument, you need a little bit more evidence from an external source to be able to prove that to this guy. So just a little, ha and and even just in general, you need a little bit more evidence. Um, it's a good start. You're on the right direction. You just need a bit more evidence to pack a little bit more of a punch. So that's what I recommend for you. Um, and as for the atheist, I've already debunked him. Uh, you know, I've, I've debunked. I'm going to be debunking him by going to his video and uh, posting um, my work there. And you know, like I said, I want both sides of this argument to be uh, considerably better in their logic sec centers. So this way we can, um, you know, we can uh, punch through uh, on this one. Anyway, that's just my thoughts. Toodles.